Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and uh, in this particular video I'm going to have a look at a Pro 200 printer here and making a basic colour print with it. Now I've produced lots of videos in the past and I've got a detailed review of this but I still get a lot of questions from people asking what my basic print process is. Now I'm going to use an image here of some dried flowers that I took uh, whilst I was testing a new macro lens. Now I've printed this much larger and it's a, it's a very big image. I've done a big print of this when I was testing a large format printer a few weeks ago but I want to see what it comes out like on this the Pro 2 die base printer. Now I'm going to be using a fairly standard luster paper and it's one that I've got a profile for. I have got lots of profiles I've created for this printer when I did the testing. They're listed in the main written review so if anyone wants any of those profiles they're available for non-commercial use just let me know. But let's go how I'm going to approach this image. Now I've created the image, I've photographed it and I've edited it to look okay on the screen. Now this screen here is actually set up so it looks okay on the video so it matches the lighting so I wouldn't necessarily use this precise screen for editing I'd use one of the larger screens that I've got uh, connected up to a different computer where I do my, my, most of my photo editing but I've opened this in Photoshop now here it's Photoshop CS6 um, I would use the latest Photoshop on my normal editing machine makes no difference in this instance all I want to do is just print this picture. Now I'm not going to print it borderless or anything fancy like that. I've never been greatly struck with borderless prints and also uh, borderless printing is a great way if you do a lot of it of uh, creating a mess inside your printer and requiring more print, more cleaning. So here's the image. It's open in Photoshop. Uh, you could do this in Affinity Photo for example. Uh, personally I don't like Lightroom so I never use it for anything. I've got no use for it whatsoever. Uh, in case anyone wonders it's mainly about the catalogue system but there are a whole load of other reasons for it. But anyway I've used Photoshop for years. The key is I have an image that I'm happy with what it looks like. I've looked at it in terms of histogram and other things like that just to see that the image data looks good. This is something you build up with experience. So there's the image there. I'm just going to do the normal Photoshop print. Now I could go this route uh, for printing and this being a slowish laptop it takes a while. I'll get the Photoshop print dialog here. Um, I've selected Photoshop manages colour. I've selected the printer profile that I wanted. Now I've been fairly careful in the layout of the actual picture here because I want to make sure that um, I've got any borders set correctly. If I haven't got the borders set correctly um, it'll be slightly askew. You do have to be a bit careful because some printers enforce asymmetric borders and the problem with asymmetric borders is when you've printed it your pictures slightly offset. But anyway all I would do for this is set that I would under the printer settings I would have a look at it and check that I've got a paper size of A3 plus set which is 13 inch by 19 inch. Um, I've set the print quality to high because uh, it makes a slight difference on this printer it doesn't slow it down that much so it's worth doing um, but that's how I would print I would save that and I would print that. Now I'm not going to do that this time I'm actually going to print using the Canon Professional Print Layout software. Now the Canon PPL software is really easy to use. Um, I tend to print from Photoshop a lot when I'm doing stuff but I would say in, if you want a simple solution it's probably easier to use the Canon software. Now I'm just going to call it from here and it will pull up. There's the image in the Canon software. Now I've selected Oh, I need the correct profile. I'm going to use a relative colorimetric rendering intent here. Depending on the profiles, depending on the image, you may find one profile looks slightly better than the other. Uh, there's no surefire way of knowing. Um, I probably use relative colorimetric more often, but sometimes perceptual looks better, so then I'll use that. But anyway, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go I'm going to print that. First I'm going to put some paper in the printer. It's an A3 plus sheet so I need to set the printer wide enough to take that. I'm 
it asks me for the paper type. I'm going to set the page size and paper type here on the printer as well as here. You don't have to do this, but I find sometimes it helps. It just stops me getting confused and doing because I do a lot of testing of things. And I'm, yeah, I don't like wasting paper just because I've got something confused and put the wrong settings here. So I'm going to take this one to the Pro Luster setting. So I've got that set for A3 Plus Pro Luster and I register that and it's now set to use that paper. So all I've done is I've taken a picture. I'm running it through whatever software I want and I'm just going to get this to print. Asks gives me details about the size of the print and it should now start to print fairly shortly. Um, I can hear the fans really going away on this old laptop here. Um, yeah, this is pushing it a bit but uh, it's, it's served me well for years. Printer tells me it's doing printing, makes printer whirring type noises as you expect. Paper's drawn into the printer and it should print at a reasonable speed. Now, if I was in a hurry for my print, well, I could print it at the standard quality setting. It's a little bit faster, but you know, unless you're in a hurry, it's Generally, I found on these printers, I, I used to be a bit skeptical about the higher level printer settings and some I still are, but this particular one, it seems to print better at the highest setting. There's not many settings available on this. Um, if you are curious about a particular printer, have a look at the review that I've done for that particular printer, because I do look at this aspect of it, because there are some printers where it is no use whatsoever uh, going for the higher quality settings and other printers, well, you just take a bit longer and you get a slightly better looking print. But anyway, here comes the print and we'll see what it looks like in a moment. Now I've set this, the image is at 12 inches by 18 inches on a 13 inch by 19 inch piece of paper that's A3 plus and that gives me a nice neat half inch border around. Um, you can work this out in millimeters if you really want to but since this paper happens to be a nice convenient size and they're nice simple ratios um, I still think in both units I use some I use metric for calculation and imperial for guessing. Well, from what I can see of the image here in the center, detail looks good, but I know this printer works well. Uh, this, uh, the Canon Pro 200, there, it's probably the best die-based printer that I've tested. Um, there are no really high-end die-based printers anymore. So if you want die-based print, you're gonna go, this is about as high as you can get. We've got lots of inks in here. It's got multiple grays. So with careful profiling and use, and uh, also with the Canon black and white print mode, you can get black and white out of it. But in general, if I'm printing black and white, I much prefer pigment ink based printer. That's pigment ink, for example. Um, and you tend to get the higher end printers are pigment ink, but there is nothing wrong with dye based inks. Um, this will last for years if it's not put in direct sunlight or left in the bathroom and uh, won't be a problem. It would probably outlast me if it was looked after well. So there we have it, one print, printer does its normal bit of whirring and stuff that printers do and there it is, it's a nice looking print. The print looks pretty much identical to the screen here. Now remember that the screen is calibrated, so I'm using a calibrated, the screen is not too bright so I do that when I'm editing. So there's a lot of things about the preparation of the image that almost guarantees it's going to come out okay when you print it and that is one that I'm quite happy with. So if you've got any uh, particular questions about this printer Pro 200 uh, do let me know in the comments I'm happy to ask them. If you've got any specific things I, I've I put some links to the uh, other info I've got about the 200 in it but I uh, hope that's of use. Thanks for watching.